Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're going to be looking at Hogwarts Legacy and the sales it has topped now one billion dollars as it patches out spiders also. So they've added like an arachnophobia mode so you can basically patch out the spiders. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it replaces the spiders with um, but let's jump into this article and have a look and maybe it'll detail exactly what this patch does as well as how many sales uh, the game has made. So as the game launches for last gen systems, it gets a spiffy arachnophobia mode. Hogwarts Legacy is revealed to still be selling very well. Despite the ongoing controversies and the backlash of the Harry Potter franchise faces, or perhaps thanks to them, Hogwarts Legacy has proven to be a huge success for Warner Brothers. Last month, the publisher revealed that the game had blown its projections out of the water, essentially guaranteeing a sequel of probably many other Harry Potter games as well. You know, 100%, with this... With this milestone in their sales, 15 million units sold, 1 billion in sales, there's no way they will not make a sequel or at least some sort of DLC to go with um, Hogwarts Legacy. But yeah, I expect Hog Hogwarts Legacy to be announced in the next year or so, at least. Uh, in case you thought the hype would soon fade, that couldn't be further from the truth as sales updates from Warner Brothers reveal that Hogwarts Legacy has now sold more than 15 million units and made more than $1 billion, approximately 793 million pounds, worldwide that's absolutely massive for this franchise and i'm so happy for it i'm not a massive potterhead myself but i bought the game because of all the hype and the reviews and everything and i played it and i thoroughly enjoyed it i thought it was real fun i thought it was really really fun just exploring around hogwarts at your own pace you're not in a rush to do anything the game's not like overbearing or over challenging nothing's too difficult like on a weekday afternoon when you finish work you can pop it on for a couple of hours you can just chill out customize your character explore if you want to do some missions if you want to it's just a really chill nice sort of family friendly game and there's nothing too you know crazy or chaotic about it and i think that's kind of the appeal to a lot of people warner brothers adds that this uh, makes hogwarts hogwarts legacy the company's biggest launch to date and the fifth gaming franchise it owns to make at least one billion dollars uh for the curious uh for the curious the other four are mortal kombat dc comics the Lego games, and Game of Thrones. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO uh, David Zaslav, in an earning call, earnings call transcribed by VGC, also reminds everyone that the game is now available on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. So it's now come out on the previous generations as well, guys. That's why it's boosted the sales up even more. Uh, meaning those sales figures are only going to keep growing. It's surprising how many people still play on the last-gen consoles. But then again, I suppose there was a long period of time where people couldn't get hold of PS5s. So that may have something to do with it as well. For anyone worried that its eventual Nintendo Switch port will meet the same fate as Midnight Suns and be cancelled, Zaslav has assured everyone that it's still on track for July 25th. That's cool, so everybody on Switch will get access in July. Uh, in fact, JB, uh, JB Parayat, I'm not sure how you say that, CEO of Global Streaming and Games, says that he actually have much higher expectations for the Switch version, especially in the Japanese market. We see that as probably a much bigger install base and fan base that, as it relates to the franchise of Harry Potter, which obviously appeals to a very big audience globally. And in markets like Japan, where Nintendo has a big footprint and Harry Potter skews very strongly in terms of popularity, we see a much bigger upside probably from that release, certainly than the Gen 8 release, he says. The launch of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions were accompanied by a major patch that promises over 500 fixes, which you can read in full over on the official website yeah so i haven't played harry potter for a while now because i've been messing around with the trophy event on call of duty so i haven't played it for a while but i went over and read the patch notes for the latest patch notes for hogwarts legacy and they got 500 fixes the list is just ginormous it's a, it's a book in itself the patches so they really are going all out to try and you know update the game fix it make it streamlined as possible which, which is a good thing to see, rather than having all these faults in the game and, you know, not hearing anything from the devs for a long time. They are actually working on it. They're, you know, streamlining it, fixing it, making it better. And the, the arachnophobia mode is kind of... Yeah, I guess there's a lot of people that struggle with giant spiders on screen. I remember a while back, there was a game where you're a small character running around in a garden and there's these giant spiders. I can't think of what it's called now. It's like a survival game where you're you're a little person in a in a garden running around and there's like big insects and they had like these terrifying spiders you had to fight and they also patched out spiders as well so it must be a big thing in the gaming industry 
Um, the most notable and welcome addition, however, is the Arachnophobia mode. Hogwarts Legacy it has some of the nastiest looking spiders, far nastier than you expect in an all-ages franchise. But toggling the mode changes how spider enemy looks, um, turns spider corpses invisible and reduces and removes the sounds they make. There you go, guys. So that's what I was saying at the beginning of the video. I'm not exactly... I haven't played the game recently, so I haven't played it since they patched it. But yeah, so they've just made them invisible, made the corpses invisible, and they changed how they look. Whether they've made them like more cartoony or something, I'm not really sure. I would have to jump in and have a look myself. Arachnophobia mode will hopefully become a bit more common in place, as only a small handful of games make use of them. Another recent launch, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, has a similar toggle. Whereas Grounded, that's the one, that's the game I was trying to think of, guys. Grounded. Grounded offers multiple options of how spiders can look. Yeah, Grounded, you're a, you're a little character um, just running around in the garden, and you have all these insects you fight, and um, it's kind of like a looter game where, you, you know, you can upgrade your character and stuff, and... Yeah, the spiders in that were quite terrifying, so they, they managed to patch them out if you wanted to. Uh, then have something like um, Factory Builder Satisfactory, where turning Arachnophobia mode on just replaces the spider-like enemies with pictures of cute cats. <laughs> the only problem is having something like that in Hogwarts Legacy would distract from the overall aesthetic of the game. So you wouldn't walk into a cave, go to fight spiders, and then all of a sudden pictures of cute cats start dancing around. It would kind of destroy the aesthetic, so I, I, I agree that it's not a good thing for them to do that. In Hogwarts Legacy, anyway. Although you can see why they didn't go for that with Hogwarts Legacy, which is what I was just saying. And I think that's about it for the article, yeah? Yeah, so it's just a kind of an update on the game, guys. Do you play Hogwarts Legacy? Like I said, I'm not a massive Potterhead, and I know plenty of my friends are not Potterheads, but this game deserves all the praise that it's getting and the sales numbers and the sales figures because it's just a great game. Even if you reskin this game from a Harry Potter game into just a casual game, I mean, like, and it wasn't a Harry Potter IP. It would still be a great game, and it's still a fun, chill game to play. Just roam around at your own pace, doing your own thing, chilling out. There's nothing too crazy. No one's running around with guns shooting you or anything like that. And it's it's just the exploration alone. It's just fun and just unique. And being in the Harry Potter world, people love this kind of stuff. To, you know, to jump into the lore that people may not have seen before, and... All the fun characters and everything, guys. So it's just a great game overall. So guys, before we finish off the video, I thought it'd be a good idea. Let's jump down to the bottom of this article. And let's have a look at the replies from the community on the comment section. And let's see what people are saying about this uh, update and uh, these game sales as well. So Hypocrisy, for a game uh, that certain groups yelled that they would boycott, it appears to be doing very well without them. Bet they stay quiet about this, the fact that they're really not important to everyone else. Yeah, that's fair. To be honest, guys, on this channel, I don't really want to do political commentary. I'm happy to read out some comments as long as they're not offensive, um, you know, or degrade any particular group of people or anything like that. I'm happy to read out comments, but I'm not going to comment on political issues myself, just to let you guys know. Uh, Geordie McFly, I wonder if they start removing water from video games for people who are afraid of water. I believe in Horizon Forbidden West, there is a anti-water mode where you don't have to go through water for certain parts of the level. I could be wrong, but I really do remember hearing something about that it removes the water or there's a different route you can take where you don't have to go through water there's something like that with horizon forbidden west so go and have a look at that guys um or it lifts uh people who are claustrophobic like isn't that the point of enemies in video games they're scary and threatening and pose a challenge to the some sort of players yep yeah, i do agree with what this guy is saying like what is the point um the whole point of like having giant spiders is it's, it's the aesthetic of a, of a giant spider, isn't it? Obviously, it's scary. It's meant to be a formidable enemy. The whole point of it is to be like, you know, when you're playing against a giant spider, you're, it's kind of scary. It's kind of a little bit frightening. And, you know, you're kind of a little bit on edge with anxiety. You're fighting a giant spider. Um, there's not many people who enjoy spiders. But I do get it to a point because Harry Potter is such a family-friendly IP. It's a four-quadrant IP, which means, like, kids can play it, you know, kids can play it as well. So... If I have a young child, for example, who's a very, very young age and I think, oh, you know, he enjoys Harry Potter, let him play Harry Potter for a bit on my, you know, on my PC. If I feel that he's going to be a little bit scared by spiders, I want to turn the arachnophobia mode on so he doesn't get scared by spiders. If he's only a young child, then, it, you know, so I get it from both. I get it from both points of view. Um, but yeah, for, for young kids who may be scared of spiders, it's just a nice it's just a nice option for people to be able to, you know, turn off the giant spiders, the, the scary spiders. So makes sense. Uh, Dr. Loudon, um, I think this shows that most people really don't care or are more likely even aware of these online discussions that people get worked up about. Yeah, I mean, 
you got to think about it in this this these kinds of terms guys in our small circle of people you know we keep up to date with game news we keep up we keep up to date with all the pop culture news and we're kind of in the zeitgeist of everything that's going on but you got to remember the large majority majority of audience who consume this content they're not constantly looking at daily updates, daily information. They're not looking at all the patch notes. You know, they're not involved in all of these discussions, controversy. You know, a lot of people don't don't get involved in this kind of stuff. They see a product, they buy it, they watch it, they play it, and they don't know the ins and outs of all the controversy. You know, unless unless they're, they're on Twitter every day and they see it. But I would say for the vast majority of people, they don't know a lot about controversies that go on with pop culture, you know, media. Um, Drunk Dandy, amazing numbers for games that are pretty much um, ignored by past from gaming media. Uh, Gary Fairhead, or perhaps people behind the backlash are such a minuscule but overly vocal minority. That's completely possible. Just because people are loud, it doesn't mean that's the majority of people. Um, you can have a lot of people, you can have a small number of people with very loud voices projecting, projecting a lot of their opinions everywhere. Um, but don't be mistaken, just because you see a lot of loud projections of one side of an argument, it doesn't mean that that, that makes up the majority of people. Um, I love the fact that you lot were crying over this game being transphobic. Uh, now how to write articles like this telling us how well it's done is so bittersweet. Uh, no one ever said the game was transphobic. The discussions were about JK Rowland's personal comments. Uh, Rick and... Rick and Roll... Rick, Rick and Roller? I think that's how you say it. Think how well it would have done um, if it were not for the boycott. I don't know that that, that if, if there was no controversy with the Harry Potter IP, would the sales have been even bigger or does it not really have much effect? I'm not really sure about that, guys. Jump into the comment section. What do you think about the boycott, the so-called boycott? I don't know if there is, I don't know if there is actually a boycott or if people just saying there's one. But if there was no controversy with the Harry Potter IP, what do you actually think the sales would be? Would they be bigger? Would they be the same? Would they be, you know, would it make a difference? Just let me know what you think about that in the comment section, guys. Um, we've got Grim War 85. I really wanted to love, um, I really wanted to love it and glad it's well done. But I have just not been able to get into it at all. I find the characters remarkably bland, um, which is quite the crime in comparison with the books. Yeah, but you've got to remember the books, the, the books is a different, it's a different medium to a video game. You know, in the books, you can dive and flesh out characters a little bit more. In the in, in a game, it's a different medium. You got to focus on the character and the mechanics of the gameplay. You can add the lore and the depth to characters, absolutely. But a book, it's going to translate differently. You're kind of it's a it's a literary. Uh, I can't even say the word. It's a literature based medium. So there's going to be a bit more of a deep dive into characters because that's what it's about. Whereas a game is kind of like the gameplay mechanics and you know, how, how that all functions. So it's, it's a different medium. So I don't think you can compare the two mediums. This is why making a video game into a movie, they're two different mediums. This is why it's so difficult to transition one to the other because the mechanics are different of how the different mediums work. So we'll read a couple more here, guys. Um, it's the same. It's just a bit meh. Bland is the word, actually. So very bland, like cold play of games. <laughs> okay. Uh, what happened to the wild comment from the troll Trollenberg Terror? What happened to that wild comment? So I'm assuming someone commented something and it got removed. But yeah, guys, so that's just some of the comments we've got going on about this article here as well. Um, let me know what you thought about this game. Did, does the controversy surrounding this IP put you off the game? Um, have you played the game since it's been patched with over 500 fixes? Does it play more smoothly? Does the arachnophobia mode, does it intrigue you? Do you use it yourself? Um, do you think it's a good implementation for younger players who may, may find it a bit too scary to play against spiders? Let me know what you think and jump into the comment section and I will see you soon.